What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real, and I am on the line with my wonderful friend and fellow South by Southwest virtual attendee, Taylor Baker from Drink in the Movies. Taylor, we are at it again with another film festival coming up. How are you feeling about it? I am feeling like it's the second festival of a very long year that somehow just started. <laughs> um, I am very excited to get to these directorial debuts that are very much of a different tone than what we had a chance to see at Sundance. And um, yeah, I'm trying to start pacing myself for, you know, six months from now when we're at VIF. <laughs> yes, I... I you know, after going through last year with all the festivals that we did then, uh, I learned a lot about my bandwidth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you and so, me both. <laughs> yes. And so pacing ourselves uh, is, is a really great idea, which makes me want to give a shout out to publicists who are getting us access to screeners and screeners yes. ahead of the festival. Um, I mean, crucial. It's very crucial for us to be able to do our jobs um, as efficiently as possible. And when there's so many movies we want to get to, um, we re there is, I, I, I really appreciate, I'm sure Taylor, you connect with the sentiment, really appreciate getting screeners ahead of time when we have the time to like be able to watch things and process them um, and, and write our content or cover the films um, in, a, in a timely fashion. Yes. Yeah. For me and my entire team, the fact that we can get a screener, know when the embargo lift is, mm -hmm. I can get it to them, have them acknowledge the assignment and then turn it back in and publish when the embargo lifts. It, it totally changes the game from fr uh, stressed out, frantic uh, reaction <laughs> writing that happens in the midst of the festival. <laughs> right. I'm looking at my schedule and I can see, so uh, South by Southwest uh, starts March 11th um, and it mm -hmm. goes to the 20th. And I can I, I, I kind of planned out the things that I think I want to see and I have a tentative schedule and I'm looking at my Sunday the 13th and thinking, wow, that is a lot of movies that I want to get to in one day. And and to be fair, so um, the, the, the format for the festival this time is that um, movies will have debut times every day at 9 a.m. and then mm -hmm. we'll have 48 hour windows to watch. And so most of them have. Artists. That's the online screening. I'm sorry. For online hybrid screenings. foreign format. Yeah. <laughs> With South by Southwest doing a hybrid um, uh, format, we're covering it virtually, kind of like I mentioned, um, but they are doing an in-person festival as well. Yep. Um, and so they have their schedule online for the in-person uh, experience. And and I have not had the privilege yet of going to South by Southwest, um, but one of these years, I think that would be a really fun thing. And maybe we can make that a, a joint trip sometime, Taylor. <laughs> yes. Once, once uh, it seems like COVID might actually be on the way out. So yeah. maybe next year we could actually pull it off. But yeah, this year their main theatrical releases are A24 films. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, X from Ty West, which is going to play for everybody wide theatrically on the 17th. Um, but it's going to have its debut before that. They've got the A24 film Marcel with the shoes on. Um, everything everywhere all at once, which comes out after the festival ends on March 25th. And then they've got bodies, 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 which we don't currently have a second release date for, but that's going to be playing at the festival too. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty good titles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, titles that I'm excited for and that I wish I could just fly to Austin to go see, um, mm -hmm. uh, not in the cards this year, but for anyone who is attending the festival in person or who is in or around the Austin area, there's certainly uh, on the film festival side, lots of, uh, lots of really cool things to be uh, 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 experiencing. Um, uh, lots of cool titles to experience at the festival in person. Yeah, especially Bodies, Bodies, Bodies and Marcel with the Shoes on. We don't know if those are even going to actually come out this year. So mm -hmm. being able to see it would be awesome. Totally. Um, yeah, but for the online version, uh, 48 hour windows, I think there's an RSVP system that they have. If you mm -hmm. have a pass, you can RSVP to uh, most movies. There are some movies that don't need an RSVP. So um, kind of check what badge you have and what access you, uh, you have if you're attending virtually. So um, yeah, Taylor, you have much better notes on South by Southwest than I do. So we're we're ripping off of your notes today. <laughs> All right, let's let's start with my notes. Um, we're gonna do the online films that I'm most anticipating because there's lots of films that are playing South by Southwest in person, um, as well as television shows like Halo and mm -hmm. Atlanta season three that are only playing in theaters uh, mm -hmm. down in Austin. So 
we're going to stick to online, the, the online portion of this hybrid festival. Uh, so yep. the first title that I have is Jeff Bana's Spin Me Round. This is a follow-up to The Little Hours and Horse Girl. It's a collaboration, again, with Aubrey Plaza and Allison Brie. Uh, it looks like it's kind of a, a comedy, adult-oriented comedy, and it's just one of those films that sounds like a great time in the middle of a festival where we're watching so much stuff that's taking up bandwidth that sounds like it's going to be a more relaxing a possibly fun watch you if you followed my coverage at sundance you know you say aubrey plaza and i am sold right so i i actually don't know a whole lot of fan of emily the criminal here huh i kind of like that one but i loved aubrey plaza in it Okay. She has a line in that movie that is like going to be my favorite line of all movies this 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 year. I'm sure, or at least it's going to rank up there. But Aubrey Plaza. What line? Oh, when she's in the interview, and they say, uh, and they say, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys watch Emily the Criminal and get to that that uh, that internship. It's a great interview. moment. <laughs> it's a wonderful moment. Um, but uh, but yeah, Aubrey Plaza. She, I I love her performance. I love kind of her presence on screen. I love the roles that she chooses. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of got hooked on her after Black Bear. And again, if you follow my coverage, you know how much I like that movie. But yeah, Aubrey Plaza. Say that, and I'm sold. So I don't know a whole lot about this film except for that and uh and have you not seen me? the little hours or horse girl or joshy wow no, okay haven't. he's um homework for me he's definitely like an independent comedy guy with that's got like a darker bent to his writing mm -hmm. um but yeah hopefully it's you know the the fun buddy comedy even if it's dark that i want it to be because allison brie and aubrey plaza just seem like a great meshing mm -hmm. um how about you what's one of the films that you're anticipating you know what? So this one, I, I have had a chance to see it already, but um, I want to bring it up because it it um, it is certainly it has a very bizarre premise that I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's like off putting, but the one that I want to see or that I want to talk about is uh, I love my dad. Um, I remember reading the synopsis and thinking this can either be really good or really weird. Um, and, uh, and so I went back and watched, uh, his original, that, that director's original film, his name is James, um, Morosini. Um, I watched, uh, his previous film, uh, um, three something, um, which has kind of an equally bizarre, uh, premise of, of this, this threesome with two best friends and, a and a mutual friend gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny premise at least. <laughs> right. It's a funny premise. And and uh, and there's certainly a lot of, of awkward comedy that happens uh, in that film. Um, but I think that uh, I watched that and and got a, a really good sense of like the awkward comedy that James goes for in his uh, in his films. Um, and yeah, the premise reflects that here with I Love My Dad, which is about uh, a dad who who is kind of estranged from his son and wants to be a part of his life and the way that he find the way that he finds to do that is to make a fake profile with a really attractive girl and catfish his son um mm -hmm. yeah uh i recommend it and i'm interested in your take uh taylor on I, that title. we do have to be careful because the the embargo um right. i echo your recommendation of the film i think that the reason why i haven't seen three something but i'm going to guess that the reason why this works in quotations so well is the supporting cast around him is very great like you have rachel dratch in a throwaway role as pat oswald's uh girlfriend for now who's mm -hmm. like his superior at work and she's always been amazing but she she just brings a certain seriousness um to a character like she says a line to pat and like well, you're bad at sex. That's why I want you to sex to me instead. You owe me. And and it's just like, oh my God, like this guy just got owned and it's like just normal day-to-day -day life for him. Um, and then there's the, uh, the fantasies of our main character talking to this catfish girl mm -hmm. in his um, lived reality. And it's those sequences that, that kind of co-mingle and coalesce into a film that is much more put together than I would have expected when I started the film. Um, 
we obviously can't say too much more than that. <laughs> exactly. Um, Lil Ray uh, Howery is also in it. And it's so funny how... Uh, That's he, right, he mm-hmm. is. He picks up these... I mean, if you watch Free Guy, he has this supporting role in Free Guy as like the, the best friend that kind of shows up and and uh, and helps out the main character. And he this one, he he carries the same kind of role and he's just as good at it. <laughs> like, I, yes, he, he, ha- <laughs> he has been typecast and he always delivers his typecasting he's like yeah. eric andre like if you typecast this guy in the right role mm-hmm. you get everything you need yeah 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 absolutely so yeah lo- lots of uh lots of good reasons to to check that one out and and um yeah i just was was very Total happy control is worth the view alone just yeah. to see a new director learn how to control tone um uh, mm-hmm. it, it's worth it absolutely cool what else you got I have Eli Horowitz's The Cow. This is a off-kilter, maybe horror movie. It's hard to say. I think it's from the Midnighter section. And it stars Winona Ryder and I think Dermot Mulroney or Dylan McDermott. I get those guys confused all the time. But uh, they they both double book a cabin uh, with another couple. And then in the middle of the night or something, they the husband leaves her with the other couples uh, with the woman from the other couple. And that's all you really know from the synopsis. It's just, that sounds intriguing to me. Winona Ryder is um, at worst fascinating to watch a performance for. So um, I'm just in on premise and this is her directorial debut. So I can see one of my favorite actresses and see a directorial debut at the same time. Works for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think South by Southwest this year, there's a lot of documentaries uh, on the docket, um, but the next um, uh, genre that seems to be very prevalent in the lineup is this mystery uh, horror suspense kind of um, yep. uh, genre. And the cow- emergency master, this mm-hmm. X, bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So lots of that. And I love it. The watcher. I, yeah, the watcher. Yep, ab- absolutely. Um, and so, yes, I, I am in on that genre. And the cow is on my schedule, is on my list of things that I really want to see. Um, primarily for the premise. I thought that the premise is is super interesting. But like you said, Winona Ryder is is definitely a uh, uh, an attraction to uh, to to uh to watch and and enjoy um and i think uh i i just i like mystery in film and so i'm very interested in how this one unfolds and uh and yeah it's- yeah finding something intriguing that holds your attention especially in the middle of the festival it's a beautiful thing and what what have we said what have we said before uh about about 90 minute run times <laughs> <laughs> that they are the best <laughs> wonderful o- that- <laughs> only only beaten by less minutes but only yes. <laughs> <laughs> now look as we know we'll watch anything that's good however long it mm-hmm. is but man at these festivals oh 90- you're talking to a guy that saw the batman three times yeah. i'll watch anything <laughs> yes i will not be watching <laughs> but in the, the middle of the times. festival yeah <laughs> <laughs> right so this one clocks in at a very breezy 90 minutes uh and and that also appeals to me as well so um so yeah really uh really cool one that i'm looking forward to all right uh the next title that i'm anticipating is the directorial debut of michael morris called to leslie which stars andrea riceborough who also serves as a producer on the film Mm -hmm. allison janney and steven root it's about a west texas mother that wins the lottery squanders all of the the money like instantaneously leaving behind in the words of the synopsis a world of heartbreak then years later with her charm running out and nowhere to go, she fights to rebuild the life that she had and find redemption. Um, now it's interesting to me because this is actually a director that has work behind him. He'd been part of two limited series, the slap and political animals before doing this. And um, so that, that speaks to a, a possible quality of, of the film and direction. And then you know, three heavy hitters like Andrea Riceborough, Allison Janney, and Stephen Root. That's just, this is hopefully going to be one of the better ensembles that I get to see at the festival. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, was it, uh, give me the name of that one again. I don't think it was on my radar. To Leslie. To Leslie. Cool. I'm logging it. I'm going to see if I can get it. You may not like this detail. 
it is 119 minutes. <laughs> oh no. Thomas deletes it right off his list. <laughs> oh no. What am I ever going to do about that? Um, yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, Alice and Jenny is, is, uh, um, uh, a talent that I, that I typically turn up for. So that's, uh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm intrigued. What's the next title that you're anticipating? You know what? So the next one I'm going to talk about is this film um, <clears throat> called Stay the Night. Is this one on your list? I don't believe so. Okay. I did register for every movie. but um... <laughs> <laughs> You just came prepared, right? Um so the synopsis reads, at a time when dating apps and casual hookups are the new romance standard, reserved and very single grace feels like an outcast. But when she meets Carter Stone, a professional athlete on the outs who has his own decisions to make, uh, she, feels, or she wonders if maybe Carter is the perfect solution to her problem. Uh, after their first attempt at a one night stand goes awry, they end up spending the evening walking around, uh, walking and talking through the streets of Toronto, leading them to a connection neither of them expected. I think this falls into um, a, uh, a set of romance genre that will appeal to me because it doesn't seem like it's trying too hard. Um, at least from the synopsis, I kind you know of what it like, made it sound like to me. What's that? It sounds like it's trying to be shit house, but it won't be shit house. Maybe so, I, it, it that, that definitely you know wandering has, around the night. That's yes, just, the, I can see the shit house. Shit house, right? But you know, I like walking talks like that, and I don't. I don't know if it's if it'll be. I as do good too. As, if it'll be it as won't. good as shit house, it but um, lower but those expectations. It has. I get right. <laughs> It has that sense of minimalism that I, mm -hmm. that I appreciate in, in romance stories. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. I'm double checking. Um, I think this might be a sophomore film from. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I think he'd done an anthology film previously. Uh, she, uh, Ren Renuka. She, okay. Um, I hate mispronouncing director's names, but Renuka. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, a lot of TV in her uh, in her career, um, and so yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out and how endearing it might be, and yeah, like how how close it gets to shit house because I do love shit house, and and obviously um, uh, on the subject of shit house, Cha Cha Will Smooth is also playing uh, at the festival. Oh, we'll so get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yes, and and I'm looking forward <clears> to that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, that it, it seems like it'll be a nice uh, kind of a, a nice mellow film with hopefully a lot of chemistry between um, its two characters and 94 minutes. There you go. <laughs> I, I have a film for you. You're going to love this. Oh my. 87 minutes long. It's a directorial debut from um, writer uh, directors Joseph Winter and Vanessa Winter. It's called Deadstream. Ah, okay. Yeah. This is a midnighter. Yes. Uh, it stars Melanie Stone, and it's about a uh, internet personality who tries to win back his followers by live streaming himself spending one night alone in an abandoned haunted haunted house. He accidentally pisses off a vengeful spirit. His big comeback event becomes a real time fight for his life, as he faces off with the sinister spirit of the house and her own powerful following. Mm -hmm. That yep. sounds right up my uh mid festival alley here's my question with deadstream because it <clears throat> the premise registered to me like that's like yes i that looks very interesting but when you land on the page um you the the header image is of i presume very the main silly character it's a it's a very silly header image and so is this horror comedy like i think so because it is i i mean you would assume so because it's an internet personality right trying to win back their following and it, here on letterbox the genre is comedy horror right uh it's just not listed as comedy on on south by southwest and so i, I was that's because it's under midnighter that, probably probably i mean you can have comedy uh comedy horrors and still be a midnighter i mean i think of the, the one that always comes to mind is drag me to hell that would be i would consider that a midnighter um yeah. but uh but yeah i i'm a little concerned about the comedy right because i'm very particular with comedy that that i like and connect with um and it's it's it can be kind of tricky to pull off in a horror film um and 
horror films I, are inherently silly so and I, to me and I, comedy and horror and i don't together. like silly i don't like silly uh it has to be done right and i i can't define right um but my drawback is is that cover image honestly and and i hate to judge a book by its cover um i'm going to try to see it uh, and fit it into my schedule um the premise definitely works for me uh but man that header image just really is kind of off-putting for me that's i i thought the same thing but then like as i just calculate like well in the middle of the festival i'm gonna be tired and like a, mm -hmm. you know a, a cheesy horror comedy is gonna be delightful especially a, a nice short one that changes the pace before i go watch a foreign language film that takes you know two and a half hours of reading subtitles that's a good point and and may, maybe i can use it for that uh my i think that the premise as as alluring as it sounds uh i i also um can't help but liken it to dash cam which it it won't be um it, i mean nothing is dash cam no nothing's dash cam and i mean that's both a good thing and a bad thing because i now have this dash cam standard <laughs> to 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 uh hold um uh influencer and just to be clear this too. is rob savage's dash cam yes. not the the <laughs> other dash cam that came out last oh, year yes, yes, yes it is sorry. supposedly one of the worst films that like ever released yes. and it really sucks that two movies both called dash cam one is amazing one is terrible came out the same year yeah um, but yeah rob savage's dash cam and the way that he incorporates the special effects mm -hmm. like just flawlessly and yeah i'm yeah. And, and it's I, not I, gonna be that i i i wholeheartedly recognize <clears throat> that it is unfair to compare anything to dash cam and i know that this isn't the same thing but it, it kind of has the same, same exact thing thomas yeah, yeah it it just it has a lot of the same uh components and and uh and yeah you just dash cam i i i need that movie to release so that i can revisit it but anyway not to take take uh um the light away from deadstream it's uh, it's it certainly is intriguing and i'm hoping that i can fit it into my schedule <laughs> So what's a, another title that you're anticipating? You know, let's do one more. Um, there is one that seems interesting uh, to me. It is called Soft and Quiet. Um, let me get back to this synopsis. Again, horror thriller. I'm loving this genre. We're really loving this genre at, this, at, uh, at the festival. Uh, the synopsis reads, playing out in real time, which was a big uh, selling point for me. Um, playing out in real time, Soft and Quiet is a runaway train that follows a single afternoon in the life of Emily, a female white supremacist uh, and elementary school teacher. Emily organizes, oh, <laughs> right? <laughs> Emily organizes the inaugural club meeting of Daughters for Erin Unity, uh, and she indoctrinates a group of alt-right women. When they all decide to move the meeting to Emily's house, they stop at the local store to pick up refreshments, where an altercation breaks out between two mixed-race Asian sisters and the club that spiraled into a volatile chain of events. I mean, I, I don't, like, this is such a unique uh, approach to a thriller story, uh, and just the synopsis is is something that might be off-putting to some some people might might get to uh white uh, female white supremacists and be like i don't want to see this but you know what that makes me want to say what exactly does this filmmaker have to say about this particular <laughs> this very interesting that uh dynamic for a story um, I, I think I read the beginning of that and was like, oh, probably not going to be for me, but I clicked RSVP anyways. Like I said, I course, RSVP of course everything. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, writer director is uh, Beth de Arujo. Um, directorial uh, debut. Directorial debut. Uh, and so it, that's a very strong, very strong premise to come out on a directorial debut with. I mean, I am so fascinated by this uh, and can't yeah, wait it's, to see how it goes. It's definitely a premise. I'll give it that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a premise. Can't take that away from it. <laughs> but again, the big selling point for me was uh, happening in real time. I, I, I think mm -hmm. that that's a concept. Over the course of one afternoon. I like that. Right. Exactly. And I think that that's a concept that isn't played enough with in, in cinema. Um, where you do follow characters in real time, uh, 
and I can't boy do i have a recommendation for you yes a lot of nothing yeah it takes place over the course of one afternoon it is um (laughs) it is doing a lot of the things that you like i i would liken it to something like malcolm and marie Mm -hmm. i believe that was the sam levinson film last year 2021 um yeah, we're in 2022 now, not 2023, right? Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and it's uh, it's also a directorial debut, and it's about a uh, uh, African American couple living next door to a white cop who shoots a child before the film begins, and them going to confront him. We'll say. And I will leave it at that. But it is all the events take place over one afternoon. And it it is um, definitely as charged as that synopsis for the previous film sounds. You have been you have been uh, uh, talking about this film for uh, for a couple of days now. And Mm -hmm. I I am excited to see how that turns out. So it's it's on my radar and uh, and I can't wait to see exactly where it falls on my on my uh, on my ranking list for South by Southwest films. It sounds like it's going to be pretty high. Yes, um, but that was that was a riff. That's not my actual next film that I am most <laughs> anticipating. <clears throat> yeah, I just had had to had to, had to speak <laughs> on it. Uh, the the next film that I'm most anticipating is Ramin Barani's Second Chance. It's a documentary about a bankrupt pizzeria owner who goes on to invent the bulletproof vest. And if I go find the synopsis, I think I can find out that he shot himself point blank 192 times to make this vest. It's an 89 minute documentary. The cover art looks absurd. It's this uh, middle-aged, slightly overweight uh, Midwest white guy that's wearing a bulletproof vest and short shorts. It's like it, it is kind of exactly what I'm looking for in documentaries at this point of the year that aren't documentary film festivals, something unique, something that really speaks to a specific like invention or perspective and uh, the story of one thing and all the different angles that you can approach through that. So second chance is one that I'm very much so anticipating. Fascinating. I have not put this on my radar, radar yet. But it is to... part of their um, festival favorites. So festival mm-hmm. favorites is a section they have of other film festival films that are playing. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one of them. Um, I think it played Sundance and neither of us had seen it. Um, um, how about you? What's the next film that you're most anticipating? You know, from here, um, I think the maybe the last one that I'll point out uh, this time is uh, this film called... Jethika. Um, yeah, let me let me go pull up the synopsis for this. Jethika. I can tell you that it's a film directed by Pete O's, and that is as much as I remember. I'm also anticipating this film. Who wants to guess what genre Jethika is? Who wants to guess? <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess that it plays in Midnighters. I'm going to tell you that that's correct. <laughs> and uh, uh, actually, I think it's Visions. It's in it's in the Visions. Oh, is it category. Visions? It is, but it could. I mean, it's it is definitely a thriller. Why don't um, you mention your favorite thing about it? My well, my favorite thing about it uh, is that. So here's a hint: it's seventy minutes. It's, That's your favorite thing about it. You know what? I haven't actually gotten to the the runtime. Ah, seventy minutes. Yes, all about it. See, didn't I tell you that these shorter films they they know what they want to do and they just mm-hmm. they just get right to it. Um, so anyway, comedy, drama, thriller, uh, and the synopsis reads, Jessica lives in fear of a man named Kevin who follows her everywhere she goes. Um, while on a road trip, she reconnects with uh, Elena, an old friend that she hasn't seen since high school. Elena has been hiding out uh, at her deceased grandmother's ranch in New Mexico. When Kevin mysteriously reappear- appears at the ranch, Jessica and Elena um, seek help from the beyond from beyond the grave to get rid of him for good but kevin is different from other stalkers and won't move on so easily um yeah i mean 
I'm all about it, right? Uh, I think mm-hmm. that it also has uh, uh, an interesting cast that includes uh, Callie Hernandez, who uh, I'm familiar w- uh, with from um, uh, The Flight Attendants uh, on HBO Max. And Thomas's Wade- favorite show. I love that time show. last year. Maybe not all time <laughs> last year, but that was that was a good show. And it's good that it didn't come out the year that uh, uh, that Undone came out because I, I, Undone was my favorite show from from that year. But uh, but yeah, no, The Flight Attendant is a very good show. So rewatchable and, and amazing. Um, I got and, a lot of texts of I'm watching The Flight Attendant and I was like, you just finished it. And you're like, yeah, I'm watching it I'm again. Watching it again. <laughs> I might watch it again. <laughs> it is so good. Um, so good. Uh, it also stars uh, Will Madden, who I actually had the opportunity to speak with when he was in uh, the Sundance film Beast Beast. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, interesting cast, um, written, uh, produced, uh, uh, cinematography by, edited by Pete O's. Um, and I personally love films with uh, a filmmaker who is wearing multiple hats um obviously mm-hmm. we do like writer director combos but when you're also in the cinematography and the editing as well that that um and whatever other components uh they might contribute to um uh, I and think we all that- just heard thomas deeply compliment steven soderbergh round of applause for thomas we will address that on another podcast <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, I do like when filmmakers can wear multiple hats across uh, all components of, uh, of filmmaking. And so, yeah, this, uh, this kind of speaks to me in that sense. And, uh, and yeah, like I said, um, in, it's in the genre that I like it's 70 minutes. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> my, my last plug for most anticipated that, uh, that I haven't seen mm-hmm. we'll say is, uh, a episodic actually it's directed by Ethan Hawke called the oh, last yes. movie stars. Mm -hmm. And it's about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. I think that it already has a distribution deal maybe with um, Showtime. I can't remember exactly who. It's a six episode series. I think that they're only going to show us the first episode. But this is one that I'm very deeply intrigued by because Ethan Hawke is one of the best performers of our era and seeing him pick up the camera to tell a story about actors that um, influenced or inspired him, I think is going to be um, leaps and bounds above um, anyone else kind of touching this content because he'll be able to, to really get there and come at it from a place of um, moral uh, morality as well because of Paul Newman's, you know, Newman's own pizza, pasta sauce, all that stuff. It's a charitable, successful corporation. Um, so there's there's a lot to dig into. I'm looking forward to it. And it sounds like there's going to be reenactments from um, performers, uh, big time performers in this uh, series as well of the words that Joanne and Paul wrote back and forth to each other. So looking mm-hmm. forward to it. <clears throat> Yeah, this one did pop up on my radar. I have a hard time prioritizing episodics because it typically is like the first episode or maybe if the first few episodes of a series. And I, I, I kind of theoretically hate the idea of only getting part of a show and then having to wait for the rest of it. I um, felt the same way, but then last year here at South by Southwest, um, I watched uh, season three of the girlfriend experience, the first three oh, yeah. episodes. Right. And it ended up being, if not my favorite top three favorite things that I watched at the whole festival. So, yeah. And I, I actually think I am going to cover some, uh, episodic components of the festival. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, um, covering, uh, some episodic fest, uh, components and, uh, immersive experience components as well. Um, South by Southwest is just a very sprawling entertainment festival conference mm-hmm. thing. They cover so many. Yeah. This film festival has dozens, almost a hundred shorts. It has mm-hmm. tons of different documentaries and features. And then it has over 20 from what I think I saw of the VR experiences. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's just the film festival side of things. Like then they have conferences Mm -hmm. and music festivals. Like, I just don't know how they put all this into one. And the comedy festival. Don't (laughs) forget about the comedy comedy comedy. festival. (laughs) And it's, it's really nice that the film festival is kind of able to riff off of, um, off of that, uh, um, 24 beats per second, I think is a, is a segment where Mm -hmm. it is, it is, um, the more music oriented, uh, side of the film festival, which makes sense since the music festival is such a big component to, uh, to what South by Southwest is. And so, yeah, I, I just, I kind of appreciate that it, that 
um, that there's a, there's a huge festival part of it, but the film festival can also kind of touch on um, on some of the other things that South by Southwest kind of uh, promotes and stands by uh, when it comes to entertainment. Um, so so yeah, I, I'm hoping to dip my toe into into different components outside of just feature films. I want to do some short films, some episodic stuff, some VR, uh, immersive things. Um, and hopefully I'll have time for it. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, the only thing I'm hoping for is time. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. Um, now some some films that we've already seen at Sundance. Yes. Um, Beaumont couldn't this. join us today because he's sick, mm -hmm. but we're going to speak on his behalf, or at least I will. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's four films that played at Sundance that one of us or all of us really felt passionate about. The first of which you can already guess, Cha Cha Real Smooth. Cooper Rafe's sophomore follow-up, The Shit House, uh, starring Dakota Johnson and Cooper Rafe himself. Um, the film's already been acquired by Apple TV Plus, but you have a chance to see it, I believe, on March 19th, during uh, which is a Saturday, I believe, during the screening. Um, you only have the exact amount of time that the film runs to see it. So you don't have that same two-hour block that Thomas talked about at the beginning. You have to start i believe at 9 or 10 a.m central time and it and finish with everyone else um but it's a great film and absolutely worth taking the time out of your schedule for that's unanimous me beaumont thomas we all mm -hmm. love that movie um next i'll get to emergency and i'll let thomas speak a little bit further on this oh yeah i brought this up earlier emergency right uh, it's i i think that this is a film that has a lot of uh, mainstream appeal, I think, with kind of the production value and the comedy um, and also the themes. I think it's very relevant to a lot of what America is kind of dealing with right now when it comes to racial profiling. Um, and, uh, and it has Thomas's favorite feature in a film, a great ending. It, it, oh, yes. This movie ends in, in a way, in a, in, in a much more emotional way than it might, uh, than it might imply throughout the course of this evening, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think that um, uh, Beaumont and I had had uh, the chance to kind of watch it. We kind of synced watching it virtually uh, at, at Sundance and we both loved it um, and, and enjoyed the experience. And I think that there are a lot of people that are gonna really appreciate this movie, uh, especially with how it ends and, uh, and the characters that are in it and, uh, and, and how now, they deal with the situation. How did you feel about the actual end then? The... Remember when the two girls come up to the door and one wants to read a note? Oh, yes. Um... Right, because the moment before mm -hmm. that where there's um, police involved in a hospital, like that's amazing. Right. Great right. tension. Right. Yes. Excellent tonal execution. Yeah, I, I thought that the second ending, which is when they're talking yeah. and the door gets shut mm -hmm. during that note, I thought that was fantastic. But right. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that this movie has it has a lot to say, and it and there's a reason there's two endings, right? I think that they, um, uh, yeah, there's there's something to say, and it's very, um, what's the word? Succinct. It's very clear in like how in what it wants to get across, and so yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't force it. It no, just it doesn't. It it's happen. very. It is very organic. It's very. It's very organic, and I appreciate that in in movies like this that that are trying to communicate this this social problem uh, that that we're dealing with, uh, um, at least here in the states. And and uh, and yeah. So I, I I appreciated a lot about that film. And like I said, I think that it's going to play well with with mainstream uh, audiences. I don't think that that uh, I do too. I'm so, I maybe it did get picked up, but I was surprised to see it was playing as part of this festival because it just seems like a title that would have been acquired and mm -hmm. you know put on the shelf until they're ready to let everybody react to it right. together yeah. um so the the next title is beaumont's favorite film of yes. sundance uh <laughs> 2022 and that is fire of love which is right. narrated by miranda july it's about a volcanologist couple who um kind of set the I guess, volcanology forward, you know, in, in a way that had never been done before. They personally sacrifice and um, go through in tremendous experiences and had videography and were directing, um, or not, not directing, but they were shooting their own lives as they were going through these experiences, studying volcanoes um, for, gosh, what was that, at least 20 years from mm -hmm. what I remember. It's been a couple months since we saw mm -hmm. 
thought. Um, but it, it does have a distinctive visual appeal. I didn't care for it quite as much as Beaumont. I don't think you did either. But since he's not here, we will echo his sentiment of it. It is a film worth engaging with, especially mm -hmm. if you are not um, as bogged down with titles as Thomas and I are. Mm -hmm. If you're not trying to watch five to 10 films a day, um, it is definitely a film to spend the time with and, and really let resonate with you after it ends. Yeah, and I think especially among the genre of documentaries, um, I think this one will be a highlight. Uh, I mean, I can't say that for sure. I, we'll have to go through and see uh, how the other documentaries turned out. But this was such a highlight um, of, among documentaries for me at Sundance that I, I think a lot of people will appreciate it here uh, at South by Southwest. Um, yeah, Beaumont, Beaumont, yeah, far and away loved it a, a lot more. I can't even like... I can't even put into words. He's putting it over <laughs> Cha Cha real smooth. He's putting it yeah. over after Yang. He's a he, lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> he loves this film. And his review, if you want to read why he likes it so much, his review is, is published on uh, uh, moviesforreal.net. Um, but uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think, again, kind of speaking to the idea of people wearing multiple hats, what I liked most about it is, is the cinematography. Um, the vast majority, if not all of the film is archival footage from these volcanologists. Mm -hmm. And and it look and the film addresses this too. It looks like it was intentionally filmed to be made into a film uh, by people who who are volcanologists before mm -hmm. filmmakers. Be and because they needed money. Yes. So they needed to shoot these exciting things to get more money. Exactly. But it wasn't just like this like obligatory thing. Like they could be filmmakers. Uh, mm -hmm. which is such Absolutely. a different dif which is such a different discipline from the more technical uh, uh, components of being volcanologists, right? And so I, I, I respect when people can cross disciplines, especially uh, between creative and technical disciplines. And that is very evident here with these, um, uh, with these particular people within in their professions and, and what they did and how they did it together so well. So, so yeah. All right, our last Sundance to South by Southwest title we recommend is Master, starring Regina Hall. Thomas and I are completely succinct on this. It is not the best film that we saw at Sundance, but it's mm -hmm. definitely one of the more memorable films. Mm -hmm. It has a, a tonality and a, a, I don't even know if it's eerie or if it's just like uh, all that's fucked up quality mm -hmm. to it. Um, <laughs> where it's like, what the fuck is happening? What is Regina Hall seeing? What is mm -hmm. happening in this house? Like what is happening on this campus? Just over and over and over. Um, yeah, why don't, why don't you talk a little bit further? Because I just, I don't even know what to say about the movie without giving everything away. And that's the thing, right? You can't, you can't really talk a whole lot about it um, without giving things away. Uh, again, it has, it has a thriller component to it, um, but also a heavily dramatic component. And, uh, and I think that again this is a film that's going to speak to a lot of people's um uh, uh life lived experience with uh the particular situation that regina hall is in with dealing with very the subtle racism and um and trying to uh be a part of this uh this this culture while while being black and and you know uh and handle that kind of pressure so um I, I'm interested in hearing more about what what other people think about it, and I'm happy to see that it went it it, it uh, from what I've heard, people liked it at Sundance. Um, mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing what people uh, think about it at South by Southwest, and then I don't know about the distribution uh, situation for Master. I feel like it was acquired, but I I might be wrong. I I, I didn't have the time to do deep dives. Right, I would be surprised if it wasn't. Um, it definitely has. Uh, th uh, a theatrical feel to it, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, and I yeah, this is it. a film that it seems like Bloomhouse should just buy. Yes, uh, absolutely, just buy this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so those are the titles that we saw at Sundance that we recommend yeah. here at South by Southwest. the The last plug I'll do before we wrap things up is there is a documentary playing that I had the chance to see. I can't say too much about it, but it's called Diamond Hands: The Legend of Wall Street Bets. I want to see that one. Yes, <laughs> if you are, especially if you are unfamiliar with Wall Street Bets or WSB, if you're in the know, um, it, you know, if you already have diamond hands, you're really not going to learn anything from watching this. But if you don't have diamond hands and you're like, what are those? This is a pretty succinct way of getting you educated on Melvin Capital, Robin Hood, 
Wall Street Bets, Roaring Kitty. It's it's very much just a plain um, talk to the camera, answer questions documentary, but it, it has some archival footage and it communicates, um, I think, a, a diverse enough um, group of people that went through the experience that you get a grasp of this cultural phenomena that um, that really is kind of unprecedented. Um, and that's Diamond Hands, The Legend of Wall Street Bets. I do want to see this. It is on my list of things to watch uh, on, at the festival. Um, there have been a couple documentaries uh, kind of around this subject about GameStop and, and uh, Robin Hood um, that, are, that I'm pretty sure are available. I think, if I'm not mistaken, one's on Hulu. Um, hmm. but, uh, but yeah, this is a topic that's being covered a lot. And I remember actually when this was happening, uh, uh, or at least when the whole GameStop thing was, uh, became very prevalent in pop culture, I was listening to NPR and they were talking about documentaries that are being made on it. And I, I, I could just hear how, how prominent of a topic this was gonna be in filmmaking. And here we are, it's a prominent to- topic in filmmaking. And honestly, that makes sense. And it hasn't, well, unfortunately it hasn't gotten old yet. Um, I think it's a very relevant topic. I think that there are still a lot well, of Well, we're people... still figuring out the implications of this. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the whole... film very much ends and the story is not done yet. Yeah, which means we're probably going to have a lot more documentaries about it or, or films about it. Um, in fact, this whole subject of corruption um, is in uh, uh, is is a very interesting topic that that South by Southwest has covered. Last year, they debuted a documentary uh, about WeWork, um, mm-hmm. and that was interesting. That was a really good documentary. It was that one is now on Hulu, and this year they now have they're debuting the uh, episodic version of that story which actually stars um uh james franco and really oh yeah yeah it's called we work um i had no idea the subtitle to it is called we work or sorry we crash is what it's called we okay. crash um and it's a stacked cast um hold on let me pull it up we crash where is it <clears throat> We crashed. Um, series inspired by actual events. Um, it's an Apple TV uh, production, uh, and okay. it's I'm sorry, not uh, not James Franco, Jared Leto, Anne Hathaway, um, Kyle Marvin. So, and it covers the, the same subject that the documentary uh, that South by Southwest debuted last year uh, covered. So, um, fascinating. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get around to it because I, I watched the documentary and, and like the documentary. I don't know if I need more more uh, content on on that. But uh, uh, if I have time, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll get to it. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. It looks like it plays uh, March 13th um, mm-hmm. online through March 15th. Cool. Doesn't yeah. say how many episodes are premiering, but yeah, it's that's a, a good thing. I'll add that. It says 60 minutes, so I imagine it's just the first episode, um, assuming they're hour-long episodes. But uh, but yeah, that, uh, you know, kind of this... W- watching our wrap-up where I'm just like, here's my favorite things from South by Southwest. <laughs> TV show, TV, TV show, show, TV show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope films aren't edged out by TV shows and, and immersive experiences. <laughs> Well, we, we got to keep a, a competitive playing field. I, I suppose so. I suppose so. But uh, cool. Well, with that, I think we've kind of comprehensively covered South by Southwest. Was there anything else that you uh, that you wanted to touch on? Uh, I think we just got some bookkeeping homework. Um, yeah. For Sundance, we did a mid-festival video. Uh, mm-hmm. Due to time constraints, we're just going to do a wrap up. So we won't yeah. come to you in the middle of the festival with our recommendations. So in this case, definitely follow us on Letterboxd, Mm -hmm. at least for me, where I'm going to do most of my reviewing and recommendation. Thomas, follow him on Twitter, where he'll tell you, normally live tweet you what he's about to watch. And then he'll, with emojis, tell you whether or not he liked it. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I roll. Um, Yeah. uh, um, Hopefully we can get Beaumont on the next one. Mm-hmm. but um but yeah i'm looking he's for- taking a whole week off for south by southwest he, he better have the I'm, time i know right <laughs> but good but good though because uh because i think that a lot of the at least a lot of the films that i'm interested in debut on sunday the 13th um 
I don't know why that is. Uh, and I'm not, and I don't think I've looked at the, the schedule comprehensively. I just kind of picked movies that I wanted to see and like nine of them <laughs> debut mm -hmm. on the 13th, um, which would work. Um, but, uh, but I cannot take time off from work th that week. So that 48 hour window gets really small for me. Very really quickly. tight. <laughs> yeah. More like an eight hour window. Yeah. I, and I, I guess additionally, we want to, um, I, I think I speak for both of us saying we are very happy that they're continuing to do a hybrid festival, um, making these films online available to people in America, some of the titles available around the world. It really changes the festival dynamic to allow anybody to attend and the uh, ability to not have to travel to each film festival so that we can still do our day jobs mm -hmm. while we cover these is just indispensable. So I, I really want to echo my yeah. sentiments to, I like that they're doing theaters and I, I love that they're accommodating us here at home. And you know we've we've said this before in, in um, videos, um, kind of like looking at the outlook of of in the in the future of film festivals that hopefully mm -hmm. um, this virtual component can can stay a part of these festivals. Um, I think that there is an immense amount of value to it, and um, and yeah, I I look forward to one day uh, actually going to these festivals. Um, we're we're kind of bound to the local festivals like SIF and VIF and there's a couple small ones like North Bend. Um, but uh, but yeah, one of these days we'd like to get in, in, in person and be there in person, but it is so nice to be able to have this as an option, especially whenever we do go, maybe we can only go for half the festival and then we can experience the mm -hmm. other half virtually. There's so much flexibility with it for um, for film lovers and festival goers and, and people that really want to um, participate in this where it was so limiting last, you know, uh, before the pandemic where you actually had to go to experience these things. Um, but but have, having that flexibility is nice. And so I do want to go ahead and, and give my own shout out to how uh, appreciative I am uh, for South by Southwest keeping this virtual component um, and, uh, and hopefully uh, running it very smoothly as the festival goes on. Yeah, and I don't think it's right for all festivals, but I think especially for a place like Sundance, where it's it's already such a diverse festival, mm -hmm. and there's these VR experiences, like, you know, having it be hybrid is crucial because, you know, how many people are just getting the uh, the VR package so that mm -hmm. they can go through these experiences. I just think it's, it's, uh, it's great to see, and, you know, it's worth supporting them on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me on this, uh, Taylor. Uh, just to, thank you for having me. Yeah, throw that plug out there one more time. Where can people find you and your content? Drinkinthemovies.com. If you go to the about there, or yeah, the about, you'll find where it says Taylor Baker, and there's links to everything if you care. <laughs> How about you? Where can people find you, Thomas? Where can people find me? Well, I'm on the internet. Um, you can. Um, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are the internet? How do I get them? Uh, <laughs> it starts with www. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, whoa too whoa, whoa, fast. Whoa. <laughs> That's what www stands for. Is whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> you can find our reviews and content and interviews that I'm hoping to do on moviesforreal.net. For real, of course, spelled F O R R E E L. You can also connect with For Real uh, on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Movies For Real. Um, and then, of course, connect with me personally on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Being TSJ. So yeah, let's get to South by Southwest. Let's do that. Let's do it. <laughs> Very cool. And until we get back on this video cast, everyone out there, keep it for real. <laughs> <laughs>